Hey, welcome to Expect the Expected with Joey and Hart. Two small town girls from New Mexico living in Nashville and talking all things personal growth, spirituality, fucking shit up, and figuring it all out, or at least trying to. Today's episode is brought to you from East Nashville, where we are smoking on Purple Punch by Considerate Flowers. Each episode, we'll be trying out different strains of legal grade cannabis from smoke shops around the city. We're here to have a good time and talk about some shit. Thanks for being a part of the journey. Let's get into it. Dating part two. Love. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was definitely not on key either. <laughs> It was. Like it, was it was angelic. I liked it. It sounds good to me. My voice cracked. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Love. Psst. Side note. It's, yeah. Wait, it's not a side note. Mm-hmm. It is, but it's not. This is our 10th episode. Yeah. I feel like we need like balloon poppers. You know, everybody on Instagram and TikTok be like popping balloons. I don't have, we don't have money for balloons pew, pew, right pew, now. Pew, 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 pew. Whatever, man. That sounds like so much energy. Those are fireworks. When we have like a million followers, I'll pop some balloons. But until we have a million followers, no balloons. Just kidding. <laughs> That's so much. I don't even want a million followers ever in my life. That's you think about people that have like millions of people following them on social media? Yeah, that's wild. That's too much. <laughs> I don't even have social media. Yeah, isn't it nice? And then I'm incognito on TikTok because I don't post on there, but I'm like Mila. Yeah, you are Mila. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Mila on TikTok. <laughs> and I just be watching. I ain't posting. I know social media is a weird space. It's a cool space, but it's a weird space too. Nothing like MySpace though. <laughs> back in the day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Speaking of. Speaking of back in the day. Back in the day. Nice. That was a good segue. Yeah. Back in the day. So last episode, we talked about dating a new city mm-hmm. and all that shenanigans that goes on there. But where did it all start? Where did it all come from? Where does it come from? Where did we begin? <laughs> where did we begin? Where does love start? Where does it end? Where does it end? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. It's... It's turtle. It's what? Eternal. Eternal. I thought you said it's a turtle. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, um, some people love turtles. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) (laughs) It's a turtle. It's a turtle. (laughs) It sounds like... (laughs) Sounds like potato, potato. Anyways. Eternal, a turtle. (laughs) Okay, we're done. (laughs) Sorry. Oh we um we it's so hard to not like just die laughing about all the stuff that we talk about and so it's just a part of it you yeah. we said at the beginning you laugh with us and you cry with us and i haven't cried yet so not today not today maybe yesterday but not today <laughs> right? i'd be stronger <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> We're fine. Everything's fine. Oh, man. We are we are embracing the whole... I know that everybody's doing it. Rightfully so. Everybody should. Just the whole... Everything just works out for us. Everything I know that shit works out. is sometimes shit. But that's yeah. a good mantra for this year. You know? Hell and yeah. then just like... The more you say it, the more you believe it. You more align with it. All that jazz. Hell and yeah. I'm excited for the things to come. You know? Blech. Once you're on the other side. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Oh, God. But going back to what we were talking about. <laughs> side note. Side note. Side, side, <laughs> side note. <laughs> so, when we're talking about how it all begins, I think it's a really important to just kind of talk about maybe how we viewed love at a young age in that it's... You're so professional. <laughs> I can't even... <laughs> But yes, I do think that's important. How we viewed y- love at a young age is important. Yeah. It like frames all of it, really. Yeah. It, I really feel like 
the relationships that we've seen like really showed themselves in our young relationships and even like in our older relationships and I think kind of the first thing to talk about is how that's molded us as people and also talk about some funny shit too like with our silly crazy stories of young love and how that went all the way until we were in college 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 oh my god (laughs) i mean some again my experiences were different than your experiences but some of our experiences were very similar and it wasn't really until we became friends and we've just like talked about everything under the sun that you said something about like how cool it is that we both had first loves like in high school Mm -hmm. because not everybody has that and I didn't really realize that I kind of thought we're from maybe it's because we're from small towns that you fall in love with each other or whatever (laughs) like (laughs) what (laughs) like there's not as many options and you are dating and I don't know. I mean, kind of. You're all dating the same people. That's the weird thing. You're all dating the same people. (laughs) But some people click. Like, there's a lot of people from my, like, hometown that were high school sweethearts and are still married. Yeah. Right? I mean, mine too. And there's a lot of people that aren't still either. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, you change. You develop. Yeah. I think it is really cool, though, that we both have those experiences because I, yeah, exactly like you said, I didn't realize that not everyone really... I feel like kind of the privilege to have that a little bit because I mean when you're young and those hormones are pumping it's like you're just like you know it's wild it is wild but it's like it's crazy how your emotions though can feel so much I feel like it's sometimes for people like the first time that they're just like oh my gosh like I've never felt, like, this strongly in a romantic way about, like, somebody. And you don't know what to do with all those emotions. Because you're then a teenager. It's like you they don't know how to handle shit. Yeah, and then when you're in a relationship and they feel it back and then you both are just running on some weird fucked up teenage high. Like, yeah. what is that? It's crazy. And, you can, and, I mean, you were with your high school boyfriend longer than I was, but even then I was with mine for two years. I was like, it will yeah, oh, yeah. it's about it was two years um on the record <laughs> uh, yeah I bet. that's all <laughs> <laughs> call me again in 10 years <laughs> maybe we'll get that part out <laughs> i'm just kidding but yeah like two years but like that feels like a long time that's like especially when you're a teenager high school feels like a fucking whole lifetime because it is like you know high school is high school and people think about that when they're fucking 80 years old maybe hopefully not but yeah. you never know but high school is a really important part of your life mm-hmm. and two years of that is a long time in teenage years yeah yeah it is a long time i mean that was like half of high school like yeah for me and um yeah it's just it's crazy because like whenever you are in that relationship though like honestly <laughs> Like, while my high school boyfriend was a nice guy, like, we sometimes have, like, a toxic relationship because I feel like we, it's like I mentioned, like, you just have all these feelings and so you don't know what to passion. do with it. Yeah, yeah, and you're almost, like, obsessed with each other. It's kind totally. of, it's, it's like, weird. not very healthy. No, but. <laughs> it's not healthy at all. We're, like, the privilege of being in our first toxic relationship. <laughs> the first of several. Okay, you were just the beginning. Little did we know. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god. But it is, I mean, it is like, it's a privilege in some ways and it's a fucking learning experience in some ways. And I think, like, for me, my thing is, yeah, I was so, we were so consumed in each other. And even like years later, like, we kind of talked about it enough to like understand. Like, he, we just like didn't know who we are who we were without each other Mm -hmm. and the vision we had and the vision our families had and like all that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was kind of, he was like, I need to figure out who I was without you. And I was like, yeah, me too. And it was toxic and awful, but, and I like lost all of my identity, but it allowed me to start from like ground one of like, okay, what do I really believe? And that's like this process of me, like learning how to date, like, 
otherwise. And I've made a bajillion mistakes in between mm-hmm. and will still, but like it was a process of learning of like what's actually important to me. What do I actually believe in and that kind of stuff. And so, but it's interesting because what you talk about with your high school boyfriend, mm-hmm. like are similar, like you can relate to me on like certain things and like what it feels like when you break up and what it feels like whenever you like, Oh yeah. It feels like, the fucking world is ending. Right? Like, this is it. I cannot ever go on. Dude, it's serious, though. It really is. That, I mean, like, changed my life. Yeah. It was nuts. It's, like, a crazy, like, heartbreak like that, especially young, because you believe it so much. Oh, You're just, like, so God. convinced, like, this is it. This is the person I'm going to be, be with for the rest of my life. And, like, you know, some for some people, it is. Mm-hmm. But I think for a lot of us, it's not. And it's just that first heartbreak, that first experience. And obviously some people, like, some of you guys have probably, you know, maybe experienced relationship, like, that first love a little later when you were more mature as well. And that's, like, just as special. But I think that, you know, I think that when you have that relationship when you're young too, um, or even just that first, like, first fiery love. Well, I think it doesn't even matter, really. I mean, high school too, but, like, your first love in general is usually probably pretty similar. Like, yeah, that's what I was yeah, saying. Yeah, like, it's like, whether you're in your whatever, like, your first love, you're probably going to be a little codependent, a little, yeah. like... You don't know what you're doing. No! It's, like, the first time, and, you know, like, you're insecure. You don't know what the fuck you're doing, and... <clears throat> and you're trying to do, like, the right thing, but, like what is the right thing yeah and we had like the structure of like what it was all supposed to look like especially back back when we were growing up which is dumb that was like okay it was like 10 years ago but still things are people are a little bit more understanding about some shit but we still grew up a little bit more like like closed minded and like very like structured and we both grew up in the church so there was like you know expectations or whatever Mm -hmm. not saying they're other things don't have expectations but it was just hard because you had to walk this freaking line when all this stuff is like raging through you like i'm in love with this person at 16 years old as yeah. you know what i mean and they're like this is all i want like i get romeo and juliet they were young bitches and they were like i just want you so let's die together yeah <laughs> like, but that's like how, that's it, how it feels <laughs> like it really does feel like that. i know it's crazy it it's just, it's funny to look back on, but I mean, I think about it and I think why I'm so appreciative of having that experience is because like, like little Joey, like really felt that and she like yeah. really believed that. And it was like, I look at it as like a good time in my life. Like, yes, there's parts of it that are toxic and all this stuff, but like, I'm really grateful for having that experience. And I think that, but like along with that, you know, there's kind of that saying, like, you carry, like, stuff from your past relationships into this relationship. There's that saying? There's the thing. <laughs> that's, I think that's a pretty <laughs> on-the-head freaking saying. Take your baggage with you, yeah. you know, that you've got from that experience. But Totally. I think it's the same thing, like, when you're, you know, especially that first love, you kind of look at maybe mimicking or trying not to mimic, also on the other hand, you know, patterns that you've seen like growing up in relationships and it could not like it could be your parents it could be like like whoever like, people you admire you. yeah people you admire like even like celebrities or like whatever yeah yeah like other friends you know and it's like you see other these friends and you kind of yeah you kind of like pick up on it and um i think that that really like shapes you know in i don't know like the decisions you make in your relationships or the things that you choose because you're kind of you're mimicking what you're seeing or also trying not to mimic that and kind of over correcting. So we love a good overcorrection. <clears throat> overcorrection. We've done that. I've overcorrected. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of. I mean, yeah. Dude, it's weird. My mom always told me though, especially after that, especially after my high school boyfriend and I broke up cuz we went like to college together and shit. Yeah. But yeah, when I look back on it, aside from like the last little tail bit of it, like I'm grateful for it, too, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's nice because when you're young, you think, oh, my God, I'm never going to get over this. Like, this is... Yeah. Yeah, my world is ending. And my world did end for a little bit. But then I just, like, I walked into a new season, and I'm... But there's stuff that I carried and that I've learned. Mm -hmm. Um, But my mom... Back to it. My mom told me that you should date other people, and then, yeah, you take what you like 
and then what you don't like and what mm-hmm. you want and like create your boundaries that way you know yeah it's definitely very much like a growing process holy shit and sometimes <laughs> you fucking backtrack you know what i mean like <laughs> when you think you oh yeah we have <laughs> we all talk all about that later <laughs> When you think you got it right, <laughs> oh, you can still get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is for damn sure. I, oh my god, man! I even think too. Um, I mean, so I had my high school boyfriend, and then we broke up, and world ended. World ended. World domination, not domination. World domination. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, wrong thing. What? <laughs> Potato, potato. Potato, potato. Oh, my gosh. You turn on the turtle. You turn on the turtle. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Anyways, yeah, so college, right? I'm assuming that's what you're getting into is because your high school boyfriend and then you went to college. And yeah. that was a whole different experience. But... Do you feel like you carried stuff from your high school relationship into? Yeah, I think like a little bit. One? I mean, so like in between all of that, and I know we're going to talk about this more in like another podcast, but I think in between all of that where, you know, I had some like negative experiences with guys, you know what I mean? So it's like mm-hmm. I was in this like relationship <clears throat> with my boyfriend for two years and then we break up. And I was in the church and stuff, and yada, yada, yada. We'll talk about that later. But um, it's like, some of those church boys, dude, they're fucking bad. Like, they're bad. (laughs) So, like, and so it's just, like, I feel like that kind of, like. Oh, that, ugh. I hate to, like, say it, but it fucked me up a little bit for a while. Dude, no shit, it fucked me up. Yeah, well, yeah. Because it's just, like, one, like, I was, like. A thick bitch with big old titties, like, in church, and that was, like, forbidden, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, God, sorry, like, God gave me this fucking womanly oh, body. sorry, God gave me titties, you assholes. <laughs> <laughs> no, shit. <laughs> like, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And so it's like, I was always getting, like, nagged on about what I was wearing. I was trying to be appropriate. Like, they were like, oh, you're thick. You can't wear shorts because your butt's going to come out or your hips. And it's like, and then you watch where you wear. Your titties are out. Okay. Your like, sh- calm, calm the fuck down. Yeah, dude. Your clavicle is just too much. It's oh just gosh. too much Fucking for ridiculous. these boys. Well, teach your boys what? maybe to, yeah. to be gentlemen okay exactly it's so fucking stupid but that shit like honestly i know that's like a whole other topic we could could go down and wrap trap but and we will don't you worry (laughs) worry. (laughs) uh expect the expected (laughs) there we go um but it's just like that shit it really affects women and i know so many like women that i've talked to um that that has you know the way they were treated in those years have really affected like their relationship like moving forward you know what i mean oh yes yes i do i do know what you mean yeah but i feel like uh there's been plenty of cases where i have like you think about it and i try and compartmentalize i'm like you were young. That shit doesn't matter, but that shit still comes up. And yeah. I think that that comes up for everybody, so I don't feel like oh, that's, like, abnormal. <clears throat> because those are, like, your very much your developmental years. And and when stuff like that happens or you're treated a certain type of way, it does, like, affect your self-esteem and how you, like, carry yourself. And then something in your subconscious, like, is, like, forgets... And that's something that people say, like, people can give you a million compliments, like, celebrities and shit. Like, people will have millions of, like, good things to say, and then the mm-hmm. one bad thing is what, like, sticks with you. Oh, yeah. And that's, like, the same shit with the relationships and, like, what people say or what happened in those developmental years. It's, like, there's still shit that I can rem- remember, like, verbatim that people that don't even matter, like, said to me. Yeah. Like, why do I still carry that, you know? Yeah. But it's hard sometimes. Yeah. It's hard to, you know... It's really, like, that positive self-talk and, like, you're really having to, like, force yourself to think a certain way because that is something that sticks and it's so easy to focus on that. But I feel like that really did, you know, like, 
that period of time that fucked me up a little bit with those guys and just that whole culture um I feel like whenever I got into my next relationship then I went like the other extreme so it was like I was like oh church guys good guys blah blah blah. and then it's like my next relationship was this guy that I had a crush on since I was 12 years old jumped over my head at the skate park so I was of course like fucking little wannabe skater emo kid joey she was a skater girl <laughs> yeah exactly i was like ah. but then like i was this yeah but we were Same just thing. like friends like but we would talk like on and off and finally when i turned 20 we gave it a shot but it was like you know <clears throat> he's a good guy and like i will never say anything bad about him but he just you know he had some issues and like that was like really hard for me because it was like the it was it was like I had a very strong relationship you know in high school for for being in high school and then I had went through that period and then I went to this next relationship that it was like I would have done anything for him like you say jump I will jump and like that's not healthy no you know what I mean so it's like it's like really looking at that and being like fuck dude like I remember <clears throat> You know, just... So, he lived in Albuquerque, and I lived in Las Cruces where I was going to school. And so, I would, like, drive up there all the time to see him because my sister lived there, and I have friends there. So, I was there, like, every weekend for a while. Which is, like, four hours, three yeah. hours. Something like that. It's far. Yeah. I expect you expected. She did it again in another relationship, but that's beside the point. So, like... <laughs> so, it's just... I remember I would just drive up there all the time to, like, see him. And, like, we were sleeping in his friends like the room that he was renting that was like not in a great area of albuquerque and we slept on like a twin mattress together Mm -hmm. and it was just like but i would have done anything for him anything so those are the days sleeping on twin i can't even sleep on a twin mattress by myself anymore (laughs) no thank you let alone an air mattress (laughs) yeah it was an air mattress yes you didn't say on the floor oh yeah it was an air a twin size and he was like six three holy shit i don't even know how he fit on it we did it probably i was like halfway on the floor it's fine (laughs) oh my gosh but i love him but i love him (laughs) oh my god that is the fucking yeah just for the but mom i love him oh my gosh for real and then no i know that's funny if you look back on your past self and you hear like if you can picture your past self saying that to your current self but i love him i would turn around and be like shut the fuck up up. (laughs) no you don't no you don't like calm the fuck down i'm just kidding oh my god oh my god but you have to learn that shit you got to go through it in order to yeah i didn't really have relationships in college uh like at the end of college i did but i went to like that private christian university for a hot minute so when you talk about church boys they're bad news Uh, they're They're bad bad fucking news news. and pastors kids the fucking worst and for some reason maybe because i like to make out with boys everybody thought that i was like a hoochie mama and i was like i just like kissing happy happy hoochie mama expect expect, expect. i'm like i'm not even a hoe right now like i just like to smooch i just like to smooch Mm -hmm. with baseball players he was but he didn't really count that's probably why i liked him is because he wasn't one of the churchy boys but yeah i did the same thing i went like opposite direction i just was like i started serving while i was going to that school Mm -hmm. and i lived off campus so yeah i was just got into the service industry and so (laughs) i was like not fucking with the church boys anymore you know what i mean so yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) and there was like so many boys in between and then i dated my oh is it time about chad yeah is that what you're gonna say i was gonna say chad yeah Chad. Oh, God. Here we go. I'm just, just, I mean, it was my first relationship, like, since my high school boyfriend. I had been treated a certain type of way. Yeah, I felt like a hoe. And, like, no one wanted to, like, because all these church boys were perfect and, like, needed a certain image. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't, like, the image or whatever, which is fine. But Me I just went through, sure. like, this whole time frame of just like being the secret 
And I'm sure a lot of people can like relate, relate to that. Mm-hmm. And that's not a good feeling. No. I felt like second banana, second banana. Second Surely banana. someone else has heard that saying. I felt like second rana- banana to like <laughs> banana. <laughs> yeah, like second banana. To like friends and like yeah I in boy whatever and so all these church boys and I was like not nah, fuck all you bitches I'm out <clears throat> so I didn't really date anybody um until Chad uh, Chadley and we like our first date we met on tinder he was in the air force and of so he, was. he lived like of course he was <laughs> he lived 45 minutes away he was in the air force but on tinder and our first date was a hike in Cloudcroft. <laughs> I'm like, really? I'm like, this is maybe not the safest way to go on this, but I literally was like, I could take him. So I think it's all right. <laughs> literally what I thought. And I don't really know. I wasn't in a good place when I started dating Chad. So honestly, like the validation was kind of what is the reason that I got into a relationship. Also, I have this thing about getting into relationships when I don't mean to. <laughs> so, like... Dude, you do do that. <laughs> and then that I... Is, just, that's your thing. <laughs> it's not my thing. I'm not doing that anymore. Gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. doing was, it. Was her thing. It was my thing. Was. I had a pattern, but I'm working <laughs> on it. But we just, like, had gone out for, like, a little bit. And then he was like, yeah, you're my girlfriend now. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm your girlfriend now. And then we dated for a year and a half. And, like, why? <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, there is no reason. <laughs> like, at all. Boredom, validation, needing a little confidence boost. Honestly, sorry, Chad, but, like, that's what I, I that's why I was in a relationship at that time. I was, like, not in a good headspace at all. And, like, especially talking about, like, carrying shit from other relationships. This was my first relationship after my major heartbreak. So, like, all sorts of shit was bubbling. I was, oh, like, yeah. drunk all the time. Like, I was just fucking wild. And Chad just kind of just hung along. He was just, like, my little tag-along buddy. He was just my, like, buddy. You know what I mean? And, oh, my God. And he was like, we should get married. I'm like, you should maybe think again. (laughs) And, uh, no. He's like, I'm about to move to Germany. We can get married. I was like, you can fuck off is what (laughs) can really actually happen. Yeah, and so... There wasn't really a reason to date Chad, except I guess maybe to learn how to be in a relationship again. Maybe. Yeah. There was definitely some benefits to it, but at least the bigger lesson learned is maybe not to get into relationships with people you don't even really like that much. Dude, it happens, though. You know what I mean? Like, maybe that's a good (laughs) moral of the story, folks. It happens. It's shit, man, but... I mean, it's funny to laugh on. Yeah. You were there. You were around for Chad a little bit. Yeah, I was. He sucked. He did. I mean, he yeah. didn't suck. Sorry, Chad. You don't suck. It was just like, <laughs> oh man, dude. Like, <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Hi, guys. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, Chad. <laughs> Okay, Chad. <laughs> He's married now. He's happy. She's cute. It's fine. Yeah, it all worked out. It all worked it out. It all works out. Because everything works out for us. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But speaking of, like, boyfriends, you're like, why did I date them? I definitely had that. It, it was, like, whenever you and I first um, met each other. I remember. And you and I was dating this guy. We'll just call him. Why can't you call him what his name is? I swear. North Cowboy. North Cow- North Cowboy. Cali. <laughs> just we'll just call him Cali. Whatever. Potato, potato. That's why I say hella, because he always said hella. Yeah, dude, I know. Well, hella, because I got it from him. Cali but he boys, was literally, man. dude, he literally worked at Amber Crombie. Like, what was I doing dating a guy that worked at Amber Crombie? It's, it was just like one of those relationships that, same thing, it just kind of happened. And he just like would always stay at my house, and I know it would drive my roommate nuts. But it was like, he, I don't know, dude. It was just like, honestly, like, Every girl has a good for nothing guy that they date, and that was him. He's good for nothing. He didn't have a car. Oh yeah. He like barely had a job. He like had no money. Not that like you need all of those things, but like he also wasn't like providing anything like emotional at all either. Like he was just hanging out, smoking weed, and like you know. Speaking I'm, of, and like you know, I'm just like, dude, you know, do something. Do something. That's really also. not attractive. Like. like 
When that's and all you do. I mean, yeah. we like to, you know, smoke our little legal gray cannabis. We're but productive. Yeah. Very. And like, I would he say. wasn't, dude. I was just like, what are you doing? Besides, like, just burning a hole in my couch. <laughs> it was just, I don't know, dude. What, what are you go? doing? <sighs> Literally burning a hole in my couch. Like, come on. Come on. Dude. But that's what it, he just yeah. was like, nah. And, and it was, I think it was the same thing. It was just like, he was attractive. A really attractive guy so i think it was like partly the validation and like i mean we had fun together i mean like kind of <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel about chad i'm like we had fun together more so like i just had fun and chad was kind of there <laughs> well, that's what I mean. and then, oh my gosh speaking of he would drive me fucking crazy he so that night that i met you at our christmas party homeboy like is like fucked up and like <laughs> rightfully so we were all drinking a lot and so that was a big party we go up to my bedroom and like he like gets like butt ass naked and he's just like falls asleep and i was like okay and so i like get in bed and i like have the spins a little bit but then he gets up and he like stumbles and like mm, and then literally turns towards the corner of my bed and puts his arm on the corner and starts peeing on my fucking floor carpet at that and i was just like what are you doing go to the bathroom i am in the bathroom why wouldn't you think i'd be in the bathroom i was like because your hands on my fucking bed dude i was oh my like god. oh my gosh i was pissed did you break up with him after that <sighs> that must be that was dumb I, I, I know i still let him tag around for like another month or two gross but fuck dude he was just like he couldn't like yeah, he ended up getting fired from Amber Crombie. I'm like, dude, homeboy, you work there 15 hours a week. How do you get fired from a job that you work at 15 hours a week? But I guess it happens. And so it was just like, come on. But literally, I feel like every girl has a guy like that that they look back on and we're just like, oh my gosh, this is my, this is it. This is yeah, him. man. That's some shit. <laughs> That's some shit, man. I don't know. It's just. It's so strange to look back on it and it'd be so far behind you because it's oh, kind of yeah. like it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, and then it's just not there anymore. You know what I mean? Like all the like memories and all the feelings of how you fucking felt. Mm -hmm. It's just like, <clears throat> I don't know. You meet new <laughs> toxic people and then they fuck your shit up. You know what I mean? So I should next. <laughs> So you can't be worried about what's in the past because you're going to focus on staying afloat out here with these sharks. <laughs> these boys who think they're sharks. Dude, so who are though? Oh like, God my damn, you sneaky little motherfucker. <laughs> the fuck? Well, for why? I just don't understand. But that's for another time. I know in the next episode, man, thank God this is a series because there's no way we could fucking talk about everything in one podcast yeah so tag along for the next because we'll be talking about dating in your late 20s and how that looks a little different than when you were in high school but it's still toxic sometimes <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's good you learn how to set your boundaries you need those like sometimes you just need those moments again to like make you set your boundaries again you know what i mean and figure out what you want yeah and what you like I think definitely, like, every relationship you go through, you just learn... You learn a lot about yourself. A yeah. lot about yourself. Because you're just, like... I feel like in every relationship, at least that I've been in, like, I have been different. Like, I'm a different person to my husband. Like, I've been different people to, like, different boyfriends or guys that I just, like, gave my attention to for a little bit. <laughs> like, you know? It's just kind of crazy how each experience you just continue to learn. It's true, and it's, like, different seasons, and you are different people in different seasons of your life. Like, I'm a different person now than I was two years ago, this time last year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're always just, if you allow yourself to grow, then that's, that's cool because you can see the progress, even mm -hmm. when you've had, like, the dips and the valleys and shit, you yeah. know? So, relationships are all about the human experience and we all have to do them and we all go through them and we all learn different things but similar things you know mm -hmm. so it's all how you just go about it 
Yeah, and how you let it, like, affect you, like, in a negative or a positive way. And I don't think that either are bad. I just think that, you know, it's just part of who we are. Yeah, but when it comes down to it, too, you kind of... It all kind of circles back on how much you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is hard. When you've poured your love out to other people so much, you, like, forget how to love yourself. Or if you don't even know how to, you know? But... Maybe it's the journey... Maybe it's, maybe it's not the journey of, like, it's not the journey of, like, really, like, relationship. It's really about, like, loving yourself, like, speaking of you saying that. The journey of self. The journey of self-love. Because, yeah, I mean, when you find, like, a healthier relationship, which I know we'll talk about in another episode as well, um, you know, it, it does change you. And it, like, pushes you. Yeah. And it's fucking sick. But, and it makes, like, I know for me too it's like made me like really reflect and be like damn i gotta love myself too yeah you know and totally I really gotta take care of myself shit's important that's so important and that's something we're always working on and we're always gonna like talk about because we always got to do it you know yeah and especially this year i know a lot of people are feeling a similar way like a lot of my friends a lot of people that i'm seeing are just kind of over feeling like shit and kind of over all of the anxiety that's come with the last two years. And so I think a lot of people are trying to do self-healing. And I think that's really good as a collective. Because if everybody just healed a little bit, the world would definitely be a little better, you know? Yeah, most most definitely. <clears throat> so. A better place. A better place. Forgiveness. It's <laughs> more than saying sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh well i think that's probably a wrap for this 10th episode of ours fireworks balloons we don't need a million followers to get balloons i'll do it one day (laughs) surprise it'll be surprise yeah surprise balloon pop (laughs) oh god might scare my dog anyways stay tuned for the next episode about dating in your late 20s bye bye